2017 and it's a pleasure to see you all sitting right here in front of me for the final session of our first day at ZMEL 2017. We begin with the panel discussion and for the panel we have to have a moderator. To invite our today's moderator, I request Mr. Dr. Bhaskar Das to join us on the stage. President, Chief Growth and Innovation Officer at Z Uni Media Limited. Give this gentleman a big round of applause.
in the next few years, less than half percent what is now. While this estimate is unrealistic, it does show how strongly buyers are interested in program activity, and there are good reasons for that interest. PTV provides them with better targeting, as I told, access to new inventory and a unified, easy-to-use interface which integrates and simplifies the workflow. It saves time, money, and improves return on investment. Finally, there are issues, some issues are, that came out. Mm -hmm. There are factors that hold TV executives back from adopting programmatic TV. Some of the sales team members said, next 50 to 20 years, nothing will happen in India. First time, I realized that astrology is also a science. Some of these factors are broadly the same as in the digital industry. Today it is practiced more in the digital space. One concern is that programmatic will over time commoditize and decrease the value of media owners' inventory. The fear of losing control over pricing and entrenched pricing models are additional issues. Legacy technology also presents some of the challenges. There is cultural inertia. Even business interest, which resists embracing new way of doing business. Now, there is a major difference between the TV industry and the digital industry that may slow, that may slow down adoption. Digital advertising is a buyer's market. There is essentially unlimited supply of inventory that far outstrips demand. This puts a huge community pressure on digital publishers to please the agencies and brands who love programmatic advertising and in turn prompts publishers to adopt programmatic. Contrarily, TV advertising on the other hand is a seller's market as of now. There's limited supply of inventory which is over, which is outstripped by demand. This puts media owners in the driver's seat. Buyers, just as in the true digital space, want programmatic, but there is less pressure on sellers to offer it to the buyers. Even though the second week up front here in a row will make executives look programmatic technology more realistic. This completes my basic introduction so that all of you are on the same page. And may I invite my Panelist, Google is always ahead. So, Praveen, Saad, 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 Samed. Samed, as I was talking, complicated surname, unlike my Das, it's easy to pronounce. So, I'll now start with he. He is the head of media platform for India at Google, where he works with various industry partners and advertisers to harness the power of the double click digital marketing platform. He is widely acknowledged to be an authority on programmatic in the country. He operates at the intersection of media and technology and is passionate about the transformative role that digital technology plays in India. Everything for you at the intersection. So please come, Mr. Samir. <laughs> Ms. Anita Nayar, CEO of India and South Asia, Havas Media Group. Anita is a veteran of the Indian media industry, not more than me anyway. Anita was voted the second most influential media person in India by the Brand PG survey of 2006, can't have any other survey, and has been on the top list of media personalities ever since. That was my old company, that's why I made that. In her 30 plus years in the industry, Anita Nayar has managed a portfolio of brands across sectors and the deliver of PTV. Anita. Tarun Katyal is literally perpetually Tarun. Uh, he is chief executive officer of Reliance Broadcast Network Limited. Was. Has an experience of over 20 years in the industry and has been instrumental in revolutionizing the media and entertainment landscape in India. He is accredited creating iconic and clutter-making content across television and radio, and is doing it for the biggest media, media network now in this country, where I also work. So, Mr. Gatil, may I have the pleasure. You know, 
global speakers always adds value to the panel. So I present Nick, MD of Tantra Media, in APAC. 35 years in media business. He was taking pride. I said, you are three years younger. <laughs> but interestingly, his expertise is in audience measurement. So I'm sure you'd embellish our quality of discussion significantly. So Nick, may I have? <laughs> Finally, Mr. Rajendra Khare is the founder, chairman, and managing director of Surewebs. A second generation entrepreneur, Mr. Raj earlier funded a semiconductor startup called Armedia Labs that developed the world's first single chip HD, HDTV MPEG decoder, whatever that means. Mr. Raj has filed more than 30 US patents for innovative technology and was awarded both the Uddhag Ratan Award and Bharat Gaurav Award as recognition for his pioneering work, work in the field. I hope you will increase or enhance the Gaurav of this panel discussion. Rajendra, please come. So, uh, our current format for audience's information, because you are most important, is that we shall be discussing some of the key issues that uh, the, our esteemed panelists will respond. Maybe after 25 30 minutes, I would like you to come forward and participate in the discussion because. Usually, I, mean, I hate this diocese because you know, this creates a casteism between audience and the content creators. But that's the structure one has to follow. But actually, there is no difference. So, at any stage, you can participate. Thank you, gentlemen. I'm honored to be moderating such a such distinguished panel, panelist uh, in the Z Melt convention. Let me start with the basic question. I'll ask the same question to all of you. You have given your perspective so you know there's no duplication need, need to happen. Do you find, because I found it with that limited uh, statistical insignificant no, research, second, programmatic a variety of perceptions. Yes. People can't, you know, in our business, no one can say, I don't know. So everyone knows programmatic, but it is not. What do you feel, starting from Tarun, your feeling about programmatic thing in Indian context? So it's a tricky one, Bhaskar. Uh, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, India is not practicing it uh, actively. And since we're not practice, practicing it actively, we don't have first-hand experience of whether we like it or hate it. Right? We have first-hand perception about whether we like it or hate it. And as a broadcaster, I can tell you uh, that you know the one thing that we didn't like uh, as much was just the CPRP buying that came into practice about you know 10, 10 years ago, right? Actively 10 years. For the longest time, <laughs> right? <laughs> but you know, I've been a media planner, so I can tell you, actively about 10 years ago, there has always been a very active debate that should it be you know CPRP or CPT, and that debate rages even more today. Um, you know, we changed post bark. Post bark. We changed systems from uh, tab to bark, and we, we thought that that itself would change the currency to you know thousands and people and all that. And, and it's still you know still far from there because we continue to report uh, you know GRPs, and so we continue to buy buy on CPRPs. That itself, I believe, and I I have seen this on both sides. I've been a media planner long enough, and and I've been on the broadcast side now for about 16 years, is that it has done two things to the business. One, at one level, you know, full marks, it has got some accountability, some great amount of ROI, some understanding of what we are buying, why we should buy, and, and choices we make. Right? But the other side, it has definitely put, you know, quantity over quality. And a lot of quantity buying, in, in dead zones, day parts that really, you know, have minimal viewership, but are bought in just to accumulate GRPs at the end, uh, end of the month or end of the end of the quarter, have not delivered anything for a brand. Right? You are in the business of not accumulating GRPs. You are in the business of selling your product. You are in the business of creating impact. 
you are in the business of connecting with your consumers you are eventually in the business of building you know communication and objectives and brands right and i don't think that that can be just you know subjugated to a number right it can't be subjugated to a, a cprp or grp number uh, and that is what you know cprp binded it. Uh, it has changed dramatically now over the last two three years when people have started to look at quality versus you know seeing what they were ended up buying because if in a ideal cprp programmatic environment you can never sell it you can never sell sport you can you cannot sell the kind of premium that gets sold on many properties across the world and even in very advanced markets right you don't buy super bowl on the back of uh, you know classic uh, programmatic buy so Yes, there are advantages. The programmatic is another forward step from classic CPRP, GRP buying. But I firmly believe that there will always be enough element of human intelligence and and quality picks that you do or you you know you decide to make uh, on a daily basis for you to be able to deliver pure quality impact. Uh, and nobody is going away from ROI. I am not saying you know I am not writing off either CPRP buying or CPD buying or programmatic buying. All I'm saying is that there is much more to media buying than just share numbers. Thank you, Tarun. Uh, I'll come back to you again, uh, Anita. I think it's very important to understand, as you rightly said, what is program? Yeah. Is it program? Is it matic? Is it what is it? Yeah. So it's very, very confusing. Uh, but I, uh, I think it's uh, maybe far more understood in the digital domain and not as much in the in the television domain, so which is what our topic of discussion today is. But if you were to really, uh, you know, uh, apply that, uh, and specifically in a country like India, it's going to be very tough, you know, because programmatic in the digital domain, as you rightfully said in your introduction, that there is an overload of inventory, right? So, uh, which is not there in the case of television at all. Uh, you know, it's a seller's market, and that's that's really a buyer's market. But I think to me, uh, when we talk about programmatic, irrespective of whether it is in the digital domain or it is in the in the traditional television domain is all about audience planning now. I mean, we've, we've done enough of media planning from CPRP planning, uh, ratings planning, we are looking at reach, we are looking at you know channel planning, media, various media planning, within media various channels and vehicle planning. But to me, I think what programmatic lent itself beautifully is to actually target the audience. But so it's, 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 is there a dominant knowledge pattern in the industry or it is no. only the Nayan knows, Tarun Katya? The little that I know, uh, to me, because uh, Havas, I think, adapted uh, the programmatic thing much, much earlier, and that's also globally. It came to India about three years back, and uh, across all the 300 employees, right from a club to me, we had to do 100% programmatic training on online training. So we, it was a six-week training which Havas actually imparted to all its employees for us to understand programmatic. But you apply? I I passed. <laughs> In actual buying, do you No, we don't. That? So which is what I was coming to. Programmatic uh, is applied in the digital domain. It is not yet applied in the television domain. And Raj, I think, will be able to put more light on the fact that these guys at Shorewave are actually trying programmatic television in, in the southern part of, uh, of India, where I think is the best thing to do is to go to a video isolatable market. But you know, given India, the programmatic side in digital, firstly, is is something that people are coming to terms with. But when it hits television, you know, it's going to be very, very difficult for people to uh, you know get into it. The agencies uh, uh, will probably be freed of a little more uh, time because things get automated, right? And uh, the clients will probably be happy because they are looking at. They can look at their campaigns. Uh, what is uh, what buying is happening? How are you planning? Where are your campaigns being run? Where is your inventory? So you're not going into a you know a rating program, so to say. For example, we launched the, uh, the the client trading solution, which is a completely transparent platform where the clients can actually, alongside their own data, look at you know how uh, what they are buying, where they are buying, uh, which audiences are they buying. So. If we were to adapt it, I don't know when and how it will happen because I do not belong to the broadcast industry and essentially this has to be rolled out more by the broadcast industry and less by, by uh, you know agencies like ours. When it gets rolled out, I think it's, it will have its positives and negatives for sure. It doesn't, addressable TV market is not big enough for you to 
practice programmatic? Uh, no, it's not a question of addressable TV market. I think the way we are uh, we are structured in the television market, as you rightfully said, it, it is a seller's market. I do not have additional inventory to sell apart from in the non prime time areas. Yeah, and the agencies will and clients will make a big noise saying, I don't want non prime time. I don't want to pay premium for prime time also, but I want prime time. You know, so the question is, there is a lot of inventory lying in the non prime time, which gets sold on the uh, shoulders of prime time. But there isn't really that much industry from a broadcaster's perspective, as you said, it's a seller's market. So I have, I mean, why would I, you know, get into problematic unnecessarily when I'm able to sell all my inventory? I don't have anything uh, to sell. But then, then you are, there's a lot of wastage there. You don't know typically whether you're getting into the audiences that you want, you know, whether your message is going to the right audience. Also, repeated messaging, you know, because of uh, uh, lots of inventory that you buy as part of package deals and things like that. So I guess, that yeah. to my, yeah. Yeah. you know, understand. At this stage, since I see the time, uh, we have to get seven more questions to be answered. So, as, as the bard mentioned, that brevity is the soul of wit. So, Shakespeare. So, uh, so just coming back to the question, how programmatic is your, your perspective? She mentioned about that audience part of it, the migration from spot buying to audience development. What do you think of that in the, in the, in the context of programmatic? Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, so there's automation here also. <laughs> okay, so actually, uh, you know, some very relevant points. Uh, Tarun made that it's, it just can't be quantity, it has to be quality and quantity. Uh, Anita is talking about how audience buying you know, needs to be facilitated. So, you know, just this is just the ground. I would say that programmatic in the television context has to be really understood because television is a controlled medium. Uh, very much a broadcaster's medium. How any programmatic te television solution can marry quality and quantity, simplify it, and bring, up, bring about the entire automation and ease life of broadcasters, what their objective, what it is, and ease the objective of the, the buying sites, what they really want, is the essence of programmatic television. So, uh, in my definition here, any meaningful programmatic television solution has to enable you know, the preferred quality-based buying and make it simple. Uh, so, you know, there has to be, and I, I think there's a lot of buying that happens in the broadcasters, uh, honestly, the television uh, domain, which is, you know, pre-understood, okay? This is what broadcaster wants to sell. This is what, uh, you know, the, uh, the buying side agency has agreed to buy or wants to buy. So, that's a, uh, you know, part and parcel of programmatic. Programmatic is not just about numbers, not just about saying, okay, wherever the inventory is available, just go and pick it up. Yes. So that's one. Secondly, uh, it's about the audience buying. So the entire domain, uh, uh, so television buying has been primarily dominated by spot buying, uh, but actually it's not spots which really matter for the, the buyers. Okay? It's the audience. Okay? So can there be a very, very simple way to buy the audience, specify what audience do you really want, and can a platform go and really pick and cherry pick it amongst a lot of inventory available and really present the audience to the, the buyers and be accountable for it. Okay. That's what programmatic television uh, needs to enable and you know, that, that's the direction that we are working towards. Nick. So I think um, you're right, programmatic has lots of definitions. If you ask five people, you get five answers, five different answers. I think from our perspective as a measurement company, programmatic is simply defined as helping to automate the process by which airtime is bought and sold or traded. TV airtime has always been traded on data. That's not new. You know, ratings data produced from whatever source has, all, has been around for 50 years and, and has been traded on that basis. I think what programmatic gives, if it is defined as automation, is an opportunity for the TV industry or the broadcast industry to some extent fight back against digital. When digital came in, it was all accountable, measurable, easily traded, programmatic, automated, etc. TV hasn't had that. It's had a legacy system for trading. And programmatic, as well as addressable, which is a different thing, gives TV that opportunity to say, that actually, no, trading on TV can be as easy as trading on digital, and in fact, can be more powerful. Yes, no, what Google doesn't know is not worth knowing. Uh, <laughs> 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 Programmatic TV is 
small piece of the larger puzzle that we had to solve. Uh, and uh, in my previous uh, experience, we used to practice something called as no line plan, which means that the divide between traditional formats of uh, ads being delivered versus the new formats like digital, uh, they will merge. So, and we can now see that in India, not like India, the, the number of people who are accessing content on digital platform is getting closer and closer as to TV or traditional formats of distribution. So why are we talking about automation at the first step of TV buying slash booking process? Uh, the larger problem that we're trying to solve is for an advertiser, when he wants to go out and reach to his set of target customers or target base, how can he do that in a more unified fashion? And in a, in a fashion which is far more faster versus what it is today. And three, it can work seamlessly across all the platforms that he or she has today. Uh, so from the advertiser world, uh, they are trying to merge these two worlds together. We are kind of the, the vehicle which is trying to drive that innovation forward. Uh, but at the heart, at the step of it, programmatic TV is, is a small puzzle, a small piece of, of a much bigger puzzle that we can solve. So automation is, I would say, level zero. Before you talk about pricing, buying, bidding, etc. But can we automate and bring parity in terms of operation execution between traditional digital platforms and non-digital platforms? That's what programmatic TV for us is. Now let me move from this side. So you have the questions. I represent broadcasters. Tarun is also with the broadcasters in the time. <laughs> What is there about broadcasters? Why should we? Why should we at all uh, upset the Apple cart? We can manage our deals easily with the agencies upfront or otherwise. We like the private market space relationship and manage our rest of the scattered inventories. Google is interested, 40% of your space you inventory you give it for programmatic. Are you jealous? Not at all. Uh, and, and, and so, what is there for the broadcast? Why should you give me one good or two good reasons? See, number one, uh, we really want to. What's it for broadcasters is a very simple example. We're going to talk about automation uh, and technology because ultimately, today you're satellite driven, tomorrow you're IP driven. Uh, we have enough cases in India where people are, are disconnecting the call. People are moving away from DTH services and moving to cutting the call, cutting the call, right? So you will eventually evolve to distribution platform which are non-satellite based, non-cable based, and it will move to an IP based distribution platform. Your current local systems, your current ad delivery platforms are not geared for that. So we are not jealous of the way things are. Uh, what we're saying is there's a future that awaits you, and it will be good if you're part of it. If you're not part of it, evolution will push you to be part of it. Uh, and whether it's Google, it's other, any other platform, this is an inevitable uh, vision for the future where part of the process will become automated. Because the, the way we distribute television will change. And what I was talking to the panelists earlier was, for us, it's not about TV, mobile, or desktop. It's the dimension of the screen and where you're watching the content is start matter. People in India today are no longer watching, sitting in front of television. We have enough statistical research to show that there's multiple viewing happening. So we are just wanting the broadcast ecosystem to be prepared when the time comes to embrace the new forms of transacting on your media. We don't want to disrupt the way things are. And if I have to take a very uh, completely off-line example is look at Uber. Before Uber came into play, the only way you could hire taxis was your black point. And you had to haggle your way through. And then Uber came along, and everybody is very happy because everybody can get a cab whenever they want at whatever price they want. It has not killed the taxi industry. It has created more jobs. It has brought more revenue to that industry, and it's only growing. So while they are not in parallel examples to draw, uh, we are saying that broadcasters should be ready to embrace new formats slash method of booking television advertising in the near future when the formats of distribution. Uber, Uber is a good example of how, you know, wealth is not created for uh, the guy who drives the cab because eventually pricing of, uh, prices have come down to a point where, you know, people have, at, at, the, at the first, uh, people have invested into huge, uh, you know, cab mechanisms for Uber and if you drive around Bombay at any point in time now, 
you know, at least 40% of capacity of Uber, even at those prices, not being taken off. No, so, no, it's the, so the point of problematic was not aggregation of inventory, but, but pricing of inventory. And uh, I think the point from where Pascal was coming uh, is that even on digital today, right, as much as we want to buy programmatic, and, and Anita will have a comment on that, I'm sure, but when you get premium content like IPL playing on Hotstar, it's not bought and sold on the basis of programmatic. Uh, and I don't think that clients... That's true because there is, uh, there is uh, regular inventory and there is premium inventory, even in the digital domain. The so, I, so I can definitely dispute yeah. that claim because part of Hotstar inventory, this IPL was bought programmatically, uh, but it was not bought through Google channels, through other channels. So, like I said, not everything will go programmatic, right? And we are not here to debate about the price of the inventory. What we're debating about is the format in which you buy the inventory. So, at the end of the day, even in digital play, yeah. the, whatever format we buy, the resultant, as a broadcaster's point of view, and I think this is where Basket is coming from, the resultant outcome you're eventually looking at is revenue, which is a combination of inventory and pricing, right? And, and for broadcasting, unlike digital, and even on digital, inventory is extremely limited, right? And the only determinant for us of our eventual revenue is pricing. And any process that destroys pricing will destroy content and will destroy the content ecosystem, right? Uh, we, and let me complete. And I'm, you know, I think you know, you, you give each other time. <laughs> yes. You, I look back at telecom today, right? Everybody says, oh, it's, it's such a great revolution that's happening that it's brought prices down. If you really talk to a telecom guy on the other side, he will tell you that any telecom provider today is giving you 50 GB, 30 GB, 20 GB of data with the same infrastructure that he had created to give you 5 GB data. So what is going to happen when he gives you 20 GB data? The quality of service is far lower than what he had. He set up for 5 GB data, but the pricing war has led him to give you 20 GB data, 50 GB data. He doesn't have the money today to give you 50 GB data or to build, build, build infrastructure to give you 50 GB data. The pricing determinant will define the quality of service. And if you, if you create an ecosystem that destroys pricing or television, you're not going to be able to give people content which is worthy of time. No, just, just one point, cold shower of facts about Uber. We always look at the sun side up. Recent rating agency have said Uber is a cash body engine. And uh, Mr. Kavanisek has been accused of pugnacity in terms of his attitude. You know, when he told one driver, just uh, when he was complaining about I'm not making money, he said some people do not know how to handle their own shit. And obviously you know what happened after that. So, I'm not questioning that Uber has got revolutionized, but uh, it is, it is. Uh, but what Tarun is talking about, that even today, Broadcast TV is delivering, investing in quality content and, and delivering results. So, my question is, both for, the, for all, all the panelists, and I think others should also talk, what is there for the broadcaster, what is there for the agency, you are talking about automation, Actually, if Google is an AI company tomorrow, agencies are not required. So let me first answer both your questions before we come to AI and part of it. And I don't want it to become Google versus the rest no, of the world. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> there should be some controversy. Absolutely, I love controversy. I think that is all of all of thrice. Absolutely, I love it. Uh, to your point on telecom pricing, right? Uh, the pricing war starts by companies like Reliance, right? and it becomes a question of quantity over quality of what we talk about. And I want to emphasize the fact that we are not talking about the price of your inventory. You know? We are talking about the process in which the inventory is bought. So if the price of the inventory is the same, you should be comfortable whether it comes through the manual booking or an automated way of booking. I agree. Right? I agree. Yes. So the whole pricing conversation, when you talk about industry like telecom, is fundamentally driven in a market where there is a mad rush to acquire new customers, right? You have a new entrant which is cash rich, throws an offer after an offer after offer, you can switch. So you've actually created a market ecosystem which is thriving on offers. Same thing happened in e-commerce a year ago, everybody was throwing offers, what happened? Pretty much everybody went down, right? So it's not a factor of automation, it's a factor of what 
marketing strategies these companies have used to acquire customers at the cost of risking their margins slash business just to get user fees. Programmatic TV has got nothing to do with any of that. Give me, give me, give me one which is basic answer, right? You right. must allow them, they, have, they must be cheap. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> is digital, and maybe Anita can answer, is digital the highest CPM that a marketer buys? Not necessarily. It is the lowest CPM that the marketer buys. What is that done for the digital business? It has created people like Google and nobody else. And I think, you know, broadcast has been a fair business where many more people have survived, tried, and has created enough amount of entrepreneurship and divergent ideas and views. So it's not that winners are multiple, but anyway, uh, let's not do the you know, idea others. Yeah. Nick. It comes back to, I think, to what was just being said. I think programmatic. Again, it depends how you define it, but if it's about easing the process by which airtime is bought and sold, then that is a benefit for the broadcasters, to make it easier for people to buy advertising on their platform. It's got to be a good thing. You know, we're all living in an age of disruption, whether it's Uber or, or Netflix in the, in, the broadcast, in the TV industry and stuff. If, if you don't evolve your industry, then it will be it will be disrupted for you. So I think programmatic is an area that the broadcast industry should should move to, but it, it needs to be in an evolutionary way, not a revolution. You shouldn't throw away 50 years of the way airtime has been traded just for some brand new shiny system. You've got to evolve to a new system for your benefit, for the benefit of the broadcast. But if it's about automation and efficiency, that should be to the good. Uh, yeah, uh, so actually, uh, you know, uh, I learned the broadcasters allowed <laughs> saying that uh, you know are you commoditizing my invention? Okay. By programmatic, are you making it relevant? Uh, well, uh, see, see uh, the market dynamics are what's going to define. So, so if you are talking about a digital eco space, huge amount of supply available, lesser demand, it is going to be commoditized. Okay. On the other hand, when you have limited inventory and uh, demand is kind of bigger than that, then what's going to happen is not the telecom industry, what's going to happen is the airlines industry, where airline, uh, all the airline owners are actually able to know, really, you know, some of uh, us who fly at the last moment, I paid 30,000, 40,000 for a ticket from Bangalore to Mumbai. Right? So it's, it's actually the underlying economics will be always delivered by what's the supply and demand equation in the industry. So now, how programmatic? will actually help now, uh, the question that uh, Bhaskar Dar had is that how is it relevant for the large broadcaster? Uh, do I understand the question? Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. So actually programmatic could not be you know, far more useful for a large broadcaster than it would be for others. While for tier 2, yes, uh, it is a definite value proposition because it helps them uh, come into consideration set without having to do explicit sales. Uh, no better. But for the large broadcaster, the problem is much bigger. I don't know about this programmatic, which is really going to solve that in that uh, fashion. So look at the broadcaster's point of view. What's the broadcaster uh, business they are into? They are into perishable, a business of perishable invention, right? Uh, which is uh, changing, you know, uh, from uh, the inventory that they have, the value of it is so fluctuating. And yet, a large broadcaster needs to be sure that how do you, in this environment, predict that I have deterministic revenues going, I have, I'm able to do, now obviously the uh, uh, large plant in a, in, a, in a vegetable market, which is what this is, this is. So how do I maximize my opportunity by uh, creating enough assured revenue and enough opportunity revenue? So that's where you know, the upfronts, which the broadcasters do, your premium inventory is sold on a price that is commanded by the broadcaster. So basically the price equation is relevant, is something which is you know, a, a demand and supply equation. But within the, uh, the range of the price that is defined, if the rest of the process can be automated and you know, uh, can help make that uh, intent uh, turn into actual execution, you know, then programmatic is actually a blessing for the broadcaster waiting to happen. Okay. So let me, me come in. Yes. Since I'm the only broadcaster here right. and everybody seems to be talking to broadcasters. So let me assure you that nobody here on the broadcasting side is walking away from technology. Uh, 
I run both the TV network as well as the radio network. And I can tell you we invested in technology uh, 11 years ago uh, on the same basis, right? We, we went down and, and bought a very definite maximization software called Binobic. At that point in time, they were the only guys doing TV and radio across the world. And, and they can actually do predictive work where they can tell you where your energy is going free and how you can do dynamic pricing and, and revenue max maximization. And we've done that for the last 11 years, you know. That is, to our knowledge, exactly like the airline industry. So all of us, at, at a large scale level, have enough investment done in automation for us to be predictive about our revenue. So we obviously don't go into the month not knowing what we're going to get and how we're going to get. We have buckets of revenue. We understand that you know 60, 70 percent of our revenue comes from annual deals from you know clients who come month on month, CPRT deals who we can you know go up and down with because we've got to fulfill their CPRT requirements. And then there is the there is the top up that we we leave up empty and we monitor that on an hourly basis, on a daily basis. And we have a system that can monitor all our 60 radio stations that are TV channels on an hourly basis. I can tell you now what my inventory well and which day part is, and I can take pricing decisions. When Anita's agency comes back and asks me whether you know we want to take a certain business at a certain price, I'm not giving up blind decisions because eventually I need to service that business. And, I, and if I log in a price that is lower than all the current running prices, her spots won't even get serviced. And she's not looking to give me an RO, she's looking to put communication out there. Her job is not to you know, put RO, she, her, her job is to make sure that the serviceability of that RO happens. That's what her client looks forward to. And all of us can predict that. I can tell you what price level and what day part we will be able to service your business and all. So nobody's against technology, nobody's against automation. But we want to do it at our end because we want, don't want what our bottom is and what our bottom should be to be defined by the market. It should be defined by us and our pricing standards. So, so uh, programmatic intelligent content is precisely what you're saying. You know, uh, and you know, that's why what at Shortwave, you know, we actually brought in a platform called Skynet, where we put broadcasters in control. Okay, broadcasters in full control. You know, they can actually and the large broadcasters. The large broadcasters can you know define how they are actually going to be transacting. What inventory are they going to you know, uh, put uh, for a private transaction with an agency? At a price agreed mutually, uh, or what is the you know their uh, opportunity based inventory at what price to put it? But then the rest of the process of actually consuming it because you know, the, the price that uh, I'm saying there, the equation is there are tens of thousands of advertisers, there are about a thousand you know television uh, inventory owners. Okay, so each of them is making that decision, and there are a number of buyers. How does the platform actually you know create this cross matrix thing? That the buying becomes painless, given the n number of uh, you know, pricing decisions that are being made, okay? and the consumption side is able to painlessly buy, following the very rules that the broadcasters want to set, and following the very objectives that the advertisers want to realize. Okay? So, programmatic television uh, is actually not just the commodity selling here; uh, uh, in, in its entire expression, and you know, that's what we pride ourselves in supporting. That. Uh, for a broadcaster, the upfront business, how it is kind of seamlessly executed, how is the uh, impact properties, impact properties like IPL. IPL, you know, once you have actually figured out what's the, what's the demand and supply situation, can you dynamically vary the price and actually drive the market? Just the airline way. So uh, the solution is actually multi faceted whereby there is uh, you know, commodity inventory available, uh, make it available uh, through uh, you know, complete audience buying uh, buying fashion. Premium inventory, impact inventory, and make it possible for a broadcaster to really stay in control. But tell me, tell me, Raj, you know, Indian context is so different. You have so much of, uh, you know, so many broadcast players. Okay, there might be dominant ones, it's a different thing, but uh, unlike US, for instance, it's fragmented, but ours fragmented is much more. So when programmatic comes, what Tarun is talking about, commoditization, possibility, uh, that is happening. So you are thinking it's on the upper side; it can also come downside because your your pr pressure of of investing in content also will go away because your realizations are becoming under pressure. It is, as he said rightly, that it is not about aversion to technology; it is about where is that human element of intuition, intelligence, contextuality, qualitativeness, and psychographics coming into 
an automation process. Yeah. Or can, I, can I just shift it? No, sorry, can I just I'll give you a good example of what has programmatic not allowed to grow. What it has not allowed to grow, and this is an, an actually a sad side for advertisers today, is an AWOL model in digital. Good content today is not possible or made available anymore. All of you guys watched what last night? The House of Cards. Uh, it was, it was yeah, available yes. for download card last <laughs> night and I started binging it last night. Is it a what? It's not. Right? It's all S1. You are paying 600 bucks to Netflix. Why is Netflix, Netflix not a what? Why has anybody answered that question? It's because at that kind of price, say, a Netflix will never invest in, a, in House of Cards. And those are opportunities to reach out to audiences that are out of the advertiser's domain. An advertiser will never be seen on House of Cards or Netflix. And he is not going to get his time of day on that place. Because the pricing that has been set out of digital programmatic buy does not allow Netflix to invest in anyone. Or Amazon Prime to invest in anyone. And, it, and across the world, large OTT platforms are not even attempting to go AWOL and are not even attempting to go the advertising model. And actually opportunities for advertisers on the digital side, on premium content are only becoming less and less. They have to go down to generic content on YouTube, they are not going to get premium content available for advertising on large platforms. I just want to spin this the other way around. Enough of broadcaster making money, yeah. and revenue, uh, enough of uh, automation happening because technology. I don't think that any of us are running away from the fact that technology is core to programmatic. Data is core to programmatic. Yeah, Audiences which we are going to buy are again core to programmatic. I think we need to, uh, even as broadcasters, and today that is happening in India, look at this entire audience planning from a very different perspective in which today the broadcasters are doing. We don't need to look at television as the only screen. We do need to look at audiovisual planning. Irrespective of whether it is the television screen, it's your iPad screen, it's your uh, mobile phone screen, or whatever screen it is. So it has to be audiovisual planning. You know, which is why... So agree, you know, but the pricing that has been set on audiovisual planning or digital, you see every single OTT platform that's getting really launched. They're not even attempting to launch an AWOL platform. I agree. All Banaji launched last month yeah. and I think it's good content. It's, it's very not, good content. Right? But they're not launching an AWOL platform. Absolutely, they're not. So I'm saying... It's I, advertisers, no entry. For a minute, let's not talk as much about pricing. I know it's a, it's a very touchy point for broadcasters. But I'm saying from an audience I'm perspective and advertisers. I'm telling organizers in advance, I need some more time to let me involve audience. It's suddenly showing 30 minutes. No, but I think we've, we've covered a lot of topics. Yeah, but one, one question, question I have is, sure, sure, sure. I'm getting anxious being a salesman. Will Jerry also disintermediated in the automation thing, the way agencies are thinking? It is only programmatic, automated, audience development. No, it's not, because it's bad by data. Ask my it's bad data. is to provoke you to say that, will I be out of job? <laughs> 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 Machines are run by human beings. Machines are run by human they will so, call the computer themselves. Yeah, you have chatbots and algorithms. Yeah, so I think we need to, the whole um, situation is changing, the ecosystem is changing, and we need to look at it from that perspective for sure. 30 yeah, minutes more. Yeah, actually, uh, you know, the question about I'm jobs. I'm to the audience, I'll get ready with your questions. Yeah, the question about jobs, uh, are sales people going to out of jobs? Uh, I don't really think so, because by having, uh, if you ride a, ride a, uh, a pony, only so much faster can you run. If you ride a horse, you can go much faster. Okay? For salespeople, this is actually the horse on which you're riding and actually drive the objectives. So I this is just is draw, draw a parallel example. You see, uh, uh, there used to be this uh, you know, uh, stock exchange brokers, you know, you talk about 15 years back, how much business volume was generated. Okay? Now today, since the you know, exchanges are automated, you know, there is far more volume of business happening and it's the sales people who are actually are, are in drivers here, controlling things. So, you know, the skills will need to evolve a little further, okay? But the infusion of this technology on as premium, uh, you know, market that television is, is actually going to put sales people in far greater control, okay? And be able to maximize the new opportunities. Of course, the caveat is that they will need to reskill themselves to an extent that they can ride the <coughs> launch of course. Okay? 
it's not about that you know i'm saying one doesn't move doesn't kind of you know learn to ride a faster horse has the this was the risk of falling off from the back but you know i'm saying digital uh, programming the way it has evolved it is actually created such a army of specialists who know okay how do i get the best juice out of this okay it is that you uh, know uh, class of professionals okay which will actually evolve uh, and, and that's been happening all of us what we did about 10 years or 15 years back okay we do something far different to survive today okay? so it is actually uh, uh, creating much more value and capability in the hands of sales people in the hands of the buying people who are able to smartly uh, build the juice out of a much more evolved system but tell me this is just a parallel example after this it's audience i'm just you know, telling it is no connection but imagine he is donald trump yes okay uh, uh, tell me why he is look closer to him it is in a relation i am telling you i'm getting impeached no <laughs> okay. no but but not aggression you you in any aggression you are quite close to trump yes proved as globally it is happening that it is not about left right center is an open and closed system trump for the time being is successful in ensuring a partial closed system and that's reverse globalization and he's getting he's, he's doing it. china has done it long back so all modi this all make in india is just that no but at least his narratives are uh, slightly better alternative facts <laughs> so what i'm trying to say why there are all sunny side outs but it is also depends on the market dynamics and also the market architecture now you are going you are talking about a hybrid system of open and closed market structure a private market structure is possible but but in the current scenario when some people say that india's in, in case of india for broadcasters open architecture may not always serve their purpose okay so first of all i heard uh, actually there are not these precise solutions about creating a seamless movement across a private marketplace and a public marketplace right a public marketplace is the one which actually helps you optimize opportunities better at yield if possible and the private marketplace is the one where you know the two sides are running a very tight uh, you know mutually agreed uh, ship so uh, uh, it is basically deal uh, basically basically deal okay how 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 the deals are done and deals are done intelligently and you know that business rights that's a private part of it okay so now you have the power in your hand to decide your intent and just keep the you know uh, effective execution of it to a platform which which will actually just do what you what you really ask for okay. so uh, it is about a seamless combination between a private marketplace and a, and a public marketplace audience if you have any question uh, observation please address the panelist we have discussed the subject but i think others uh, i'll run out of time or don't tell me the the the, the, the deliberations are so good that you have no question on the subject is so certainly you have got nothing to say yeah please can you can you give your mic and just you can introduce yourself and you are you are making an observation that you are asking a question ah uh, that anyone specific that also you can mention hi uh, this is the bali Uh, I actually had a question for Raj. I am from uh, Axtree, Axtree, India. Uh, Raj, I had a question. I happen to go to the, uh, you know, I have got a chance to experience what your uh, programmatic company you know, uh, does in, in the store. Yeah, at the store. And uh, the only thing I thought what uh, what Tanu was mentioning about you know the premium or uh, you know that part was definitely lacking there because I saw the entire rundown to the planning and everything. there was no uh, provision for you to actually uh, you know uh, pick a premium impact or a low impact or a, you know how do you plan to build because like i i understand right now you are targeting only south of india sure. and you know i want to understand how let's say on sun tv even you know there are the award shows and i or saima and all of that so right. there was no uh, so if i was doing a plan i picked a plan for categories or you and i asked the lady to run it for me and actually there was no provision for picking impact there so i want to understand how are you planning to address it even with the current Okay, so Deepali, uh, let me say uh, what you've seen is a, a very nice trailer. Uh, what you've seen is an open marketplace, okay, which is uh, uh, you know if you saw it, it was fairly simple to operate as well as open marketplace. That's right. But the real clue is behind the trailer. Okay. okay. Uh, so you know uh, uh, I was talking about private marketplaces. 
where you actually have made those decisions about this is premium, this I know this is the price at which it has to be sold. Okay, so that's the part of the movie you did not see yet. Okay, and which that's is why I actually appeal to Anita, you know, because that's where the human touch or the human intuition or the human, yes. you know, uh, the the uh, your exactly your contribution as a planner, as someone who actually sees the impact. You know, right. I, I I worked with Sony for a very long part of right. my career, right. and I know what it takes to actually go. Uh, you know the, the the conviction with which you go sell a, a property. You know, even if it's a film fair, you know film fair has been running the run for about 10 years, and you still go and say, you know what? I know this is impact, and you need to buy it. And you do pay the premium. I know. I mean, I, I, that's a time when people like Anita will actually add that value. So, okay, so Deepa, just, let, me, let me give you trailer number two. Okay, okay uh, which is uh, is actually about uh, the platform you know, that you saw is actually going to facilitate the deal making. You know, you have an impact property. So you actually can actually float it out okay, to a limited set of uh, no, your clients. And you know you can see uh, it's actually ready to give you the best possible. Right. And you can pick and choose. Okay. So that's the you know uh, the, so movie, for the, the movie then. is now uh, uh, really behind. Okay. And uh, you know, you know, you know, this uh, business of television, uh, uh, something actually gets uh, bought on instant. Now, is this actually a very small part? Right. Like Twenty percent per person per part is bought instantaneously. Okay. Whereas a uh, large part is uh, bought with you know, uh, the kind of premium return that you have. Okay. And that's what precisely the platform is actually about. If you have a great, uh, closer deal, okay, which is you know offline, but let the platform actually facilitate you know, uh, that. Or otherwise, you, you make make the deal happen. Make the deal happen through the platform. Okay. So uh, precisely, uh, I would say, as any any meaningful solution has to satisfy the hunger that you have as a planner. It has to satisfy the, you know the hunger that broadcaster has, uh, you know, the revenue hunger that they have, so they can support the premium content. Okay. So it is actually an effective solution for what? Yes, please. Well, actually, if you have private, I mean, the private marketplace idea is a very good. Idea. Right. My and I think fundamentally, a broadcaster issue is a public market. Marketplace issue, which yeah, you know, just so many times. Yeah, which just so much dirty little bit. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's a private and bar. Okay. So in fact, the uh, the dominant broadcasters can milk it far better. Okay. Uh, so so you you are you are actually getting a very very uh, fast horse to really you know go where you want. And no, just just calculate. Broadcasters don't milk. They just try to and, uh, if, if I may say unleash a lot in that. Right. Right. Uh, my name is uh, Mahesh and I am actually from uh, the creative uh, from Ogilvy and I had a very specific uh, question but I think this was the only place I could actually ask it. So in the IPL there was an ad of uh, Vivo which was played say six times, seven times, eight times, ten times, and three times during the same break. And I was watching the IPL with say at least ten people. And we made a resolution of sort that among this ten people, we will never buy this phone ever again. So is this an issue? with the planning or the, the channel because playing an ad over again and again is very irritating. I mean, it, it does the exact opposite of what the brand is trying to do. So I'm not okay. sure who asked this question to what. That's the, uh, that's the broadcaster extracting higher value. <laughs> Okay, anyone can answer? I, 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 I take a shot at long answer. I'm completely. She's best best answer. I'm with you on this, and I uh, uh, and you know in a way, uh, if you go to the basic fundamentals of programmatic, irrespective of the screen, I'm not talking PTV or anything. That is what will will solve the problem. Yeah. If you go programmatic, then you are not going to talk to that audience 20 times, which is counterproductive to the brand that. That is being put out there. So that is where programmatic as, as a mechanism is, is probably going to uh, help out. And you know, uh, there is a there is a certain deal that happens 
to uh, make that inventory uh, run on an IPL, yeah, with crores sitting on whether it's a presenting sponsor or an associate or whatever. And there are X number of second digits, as you know, in advertising which are sold. So there is no choice but to to run them again and again and again till such time, you know, uh, uh, I as a viewer when I uh, when I view the IPL and it actually becomes a blind spot for me. You know, it becomes completely counterproductive and clients uh, want to run 10 seconders because that many GRPs, right? 10 into that many numbers. Chinese inflation. Yes, absolutely. So I, I'm with you on that, but I think to a large extent, if if and when the market from a television perspective is ready to go programmatic, this should be solved because you're not going to attack the audiences from all sides with one communication which which will not make you buy that phone. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, um, uh, let, 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 let me let me give you. Uh, so basically, you're saying here the rules of hygiene are being violated. You know, uh, mindless thing. So now this is the uh, this is what is happening is because now uh, some purchases have been made, and now uh, the person sitting out there is just deciding. Okay, I have to play so much spots, and I do it this way. So the, uh, the hygiene uh, factors are better. Now, as long as the programmatic engine is told, this is the hygiene. It's never going to do what what, what you just saw. So, uh, uh, programmatic engines will necessarily follow a hygiene which is defined, number one. And, and number two, and just to substantiate the point that you're making, uh, I'd like to uh, bring out an example here, okay, which, which could be you know, very useful for you know, uh, Anita and Mohit uh, who are sitting here. Uh, we analyzed uh, very recently uh, a campaign now for a brand, on, on an auto brand, uh, a launch campaign, uh, which actually ran for a certain number of months. And what the actual results were of that were uh, for that campaign, and what's the reach of frequency? You know, that, that's what really uh, matters at the end of the day. That what is the reach of frequency that's been achieved? So, uh, and we ran the same campaign objective through a programmatic platform like Skynet, and you know the results were astounding. Okay. The for the same campaign objective given in first shot, the platform produced. One plus uh, reach improved by 19 percent. Three plus reach improved by 13 percent. Okay, this is the power of intelligent planning, and uh, the, the, the the planning is told the right kind of rules, and it is able to seamlessly, in uh, 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 less than two minutes, produce a capability which is producing results. Perhaps for a launch campaign, the planning would have gone for not for less than two weeks. As a, creative, that. as a creative person, so 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 so, so now here, you know, as as a as a as a advertising professional, this is the kind of result that you wanted, okay? And it is these. So this is the faster horse that can deliver the result that you know, uh, uh, advertisers really want, okay? But with within the hygiene conditions that are required. Okay? So why wouldn't you want to use uh, a faster technology which can actually do things for you uh, within the rules of hygiene? So you know, I'll give you uh, an example. Radio stations are probably best to use programmatic. Radio stations are probably best to use programmatic. Uh, simply because all music scheduling has been programmed programmatic for many, many years. Uh, we have such detailed rules that we put in uh, of separation that our music flows are so seamless. Uh, it's just done in a private place and it's not up for trading and the outcomes are controlled, right? But like what you were talking about, Vivo, uh, and I was just... You know, not about Vivo, I, 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 I know, I, I was just saying, not Vivo. I was compelled to uh, you know, give you an example. Okay. Uh, you will never hear a radio station repeat a song, uh, either horizontally or vertically ever. Right, because there's such rules of separation that put in. And you will not even get an RT Berman song if I so decide, not more than five times a week and not in the same day part and, and not in the same zone. It's because almost all music programming on radio stations has been done programmatically for the last several years. Okay, so, so Tarun, and, yeah. and, and a lot of investment has obviously gone in terms of something like this. Tarun, you are talking of a case where the content you have been able to ensure good hygiene. Uh, because you are the, the uh, one who is in uh, control of content. And look at the ads. Is the buyer who wants to be in control of okay, how their ads should play, what hygiene should be followed. Right? So a, a two-way platform is going to make that happen, you know, that control in the hands of the advertiser that this is the hygiene I want to follow. So on your content, it's going to get enmeshed 
in the fashion that the fact is that the buyer is always in control of how, the, how his advertising plays. If I was to ever place advertising out of what he's ever given me, right. he's not going to pay me the next morning. That is the real truth, right? No, but yeah, because, so, but, but, but instead of doing it manually, close the advertising is there. I mean, I'm I'm I bet we could enough inventory every single day if it was to even go out, out of 8 to 10 into 10, 5, right? I'm getting threatening looks from the organizers, so let me conclude. Right. It is good that we could not reach any conclusion. <laughs> no, because in the journey, uh, destination is not, not always the fun. The fun is exploring rather than exploiting. It's a fact, I think, the, the esteemed panelists, thank you very much for giving your uh, cognitively enriched views. But most important part is, I'm making a conclusion, just tell me if it is wrong. And like every conclusion are wrong in some form or the other, most event. Programmatic TV advertising technology will have to come at some stage. You can be, one can be an ostrich and say that next 20 years there is nothing going to happen. It's like someone yeah. talked about digital, nothing will happen to the Times of India, but it happens. Uh, so, uh, newspaper once upon a time was the biggest um, uh, advertising medium, but television has taken it over. Second thing is that uh, the, I'm not telling that the US, the United States model has to be adopted every year, it's always a reference point that the share of programmatic is going up. It did not follow the same pattern, but perhaps the lead time can be less. It's a fact also that consumers are shifting. <coughs> And advertisers are also beginning to shift their linear TV streaming video from linear TV to streaming video. Uh, and TV has to reinvent itself, either using programmatic to be ready for the challenges or creating such a compelling content regime that one can still dictate terms and defer the sunset of uh, closed market, if I may say. Am I okay? Uh, or thank you very much. You are a great audience because you have only two questions, huh? <laughs> which means you are less curious. But thank you very much. Check. Uh, I would request the panelists and our moderator to please stay back. Audience. I'm sure this was a wonderful session and you all enjoyed this with uh, amazing people from the industry talking about various aspects and the ongoing trends. So everyone thank you so much. I enjoyed it as well along with the audience and today Sean Waves is here. They brought us this panel discussion and we would like to felicitate all of you for coming here and giving us your time. I request the Sean Wave teams to start the felicitation. Starting with our moderator of the panel discussion, Dr. Bhaskar Das. Ladies and gentlemen, please give us a big round of applause. <laughs> Mr. Rabbi Samir. <laughs> Mr. Nick Burpee. <laughs> Mr. Rajendra Khare. <laughs> Ms. Anita Nayar and Mr. Tarun Pratia. Thank you so much for being a part of ZBEL 2017. We are glad to have you here. Thank you so much. Skymat Quiz Magic winner, Shorewave would like to announce the winner of Skynet Quiz Magic. We thank all the participants and the winner for today is Mr. Manish Agarwal from Z Entertainment. Congratulations Mr. Manish. We request you to please come on stage and collect your prize.